guys, it's Tim from the Board Game Rundown, and I am so excited that this man, Matt Hansen, found me in the demo hall yesterday. <laughs> he designed Reality Shift, and if you watch that video, you know we went kind of nuts about that game. Because, mm -hmm. well, A, there's nothing like it. Uh, table presence is off the charts, and yep. then apparently Academy Games just produced the hell out of that thing and made it beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Reality Shift first, if you don't mind, and then we'll kind of get into everything else. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Reality Shift is a three-dimensional racing game yes. where you're manipulating these cubes in this cyber world that you're trapped in and you're trying to escape. Um, all the racers are magnetic, so as you stack up these three-dimensional cubes, any visible path you can see is drivable path, but you got to change the cubes to get the path to connect. And the way you play the cards, and for their multi-use cards and right. all that stuff right. too, right. and it's like, that's a mechanic that's not used enough anyways. Yeah, But I then you so. have a, because I love that mechanic, like multi-use cards is just so interesting. Yeah. But then when you added the, the cubes and the moving, and then it doesn't matter if you get squashed, because you just respawn. Well, that's the thing, yeah, so we were saying, like, you, you manu uh, manipulate the cubes to give yourself a path, but you can also use it really aggressively to, to scrape someone off a cube, to smash them, oh and you're right, God. and they just start back at the beginning. And you can, like, the other thing that was awesome is it's not just like, oh, we start with this nice little block, like, you can make two towers, you yeah. can do all... There's, you, like, if first players, you start with the base, that just kind of get the rules, but sure. you quickly learn, like, wait a minute, I can do, oh, I could do this, and, like, you, it's, the sky's the limit it's on how you want to configure them. bananas, it's bananas. <laughs> Now, pardon my ignorance, but I'm just going to ask, is yeah. that your first signed game, or how many games have you So, used? yeah, uh, so it was, Reality Ship was the first game I ever thought of when I was started designing games. Okay. But because I couldn't figure out how to make it, oh, right. it, it went on the back burner. I designed another game um, that was awful. And I kind of, like, worked out all my bugs <laughs> of, like, what it is to design a game and just made this pile of garbage, well, put it on the shelf, and maybe I'll go back to it later. Sure. But then I figured out that I could just take a dry erase board cut it up into pieces, it's magnetic already. Right. And then once I had the prototype, it was really quick. Um, I, I, I wanna say it was less than six months from when I made the prototype when I met Academy, and they were looking at it, and they liked it, they it didn't know just, how to make it. Yeah. At the time, Blue Orange had just come out with Planet. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh wait a minute, hollow, cute, like uh -huh. cube, like, and like, wait a minute, if they did it, we can figure it out, and then they called me, we figured it out, let's do it. That's and yeah, it's the very first uh, game I ever signed. That's awesome, dude, yeah. and you hit a, a home run right out of the park. Thank we you. We freaking love that game, yeah. and like, and that's one that uh, I was at a family gathering between, because I got it at Origins mm -hmm. this year, and I was, I was with some friends and family and stuff, at, like in-laws, and they'll play like lighter games. Some of them will play heavier games, so that's like later in the night, like after yeah. the family, all the, uh, the, the weaklings filter out, you know, we get the more hardcore people. But right. I was like, guys, we should play Reality Shift. It's pretty straightforward. And so, like, very lightweight gamers, and we set it up, and my 16-year-old niece is cackling as she's, like, sliding cubes <laughs> down, crushing people. She's like, I don't – I'm like, Cammy, you shouldn't make that move. Cause, and she's like, no, I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. She still won, which was yeah, embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, she was just enjoying destroying her father and me and her mom. Like, we're just all having a great time and laughing. And – I play that game with our game group for the show even, and these guys are hardcore, like Euro strategy gamers. Right. And we're cackling as we are destroying each other, but still uh, pulling off crazy combos and moves and like, and you really, it's it's really hard to think that far ahead sometimes, but like we had uh, Spencer rotate a cube to kill someone. Yeah. Which then the next player they just rolled the perfect amount of movement. I believe it was Bob. Yeah. And then went whoop yeah. right in. What happens a lot of time is like once the ball gets rolling, you realize, oh wait a minute, I can kill you, absolutely, and it becomes this bloodbath. And while right. you're in that battle, someone just sneaks, sneaks around. Sneaks right in. Right. And we played that game in like 30, 35 minutes, and we played it in like 10 minutes because somebody just set something up perfect. Right. right. No, with, with all the stuff I make. I need to be able to explain the entire game in five minutes. Yeah. That's what I shoot for. Because I I can play a Gloomhaven, I can play Scythe sure. or Terraforming Mars, where like if it's the first time you're playing it, okay, buckle up, here we go. And you gotta right on, digest yeah. a lot. And those games, a lot of them, the juice is worth the squeeze, and like, you get a good playing experience out of it. But like I want entry level where people first got into games with, with my stuff. Well, and it's nice to be able to be accessible. Exactly. You know, like not you don't have to design Gloomhaven right away. Yeah, and yeah. I got I got friends who, who bought the game and you know supported the Kickstarter when it was out, and they call me and say, you know, my, my eight-year-old loves this oh, game. Oh, hell and yeah. And that, like, anyone can really handle yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. And that's, well, that's the other thing is, like, I've got, like, my daughter, my 11-year-old, yeah. you know what I mean? I can play games with her, and it's awesome when I've got a game I can play at home, yeah. and then when I go out, 
you know, my game group or do stuff for the show. Yeah. So thank you I, for making reality shows. I've got this dusty old copy of Othello oh. from like the 80s. Yeah. And the tagline, I believe it's a minute to learn, a lifetime to, to master. master. And I love that idea of simple mechanics with far reaching implications, which I think is what reality show pretty much has. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And it leaves itself open to so much stuff too. And like, but. Yeah. Enough about reality shift. I saw you demoing a game yeah. uh, in the hall. Tell me a little bit about it because even rough prototype, the table presence was there. Yeah, yeah. So again, like like reality shift, everything I make, I try to give it some table presence. So right. like it just kind of catches your eye and draws you in. Um, so the the name right now is called Strange Winds. For now. For now. And again, a publisher can do whatever they want with it if, if I get it signed. Um, right. But so you command a fleet of ships on this whirlpool in the ocean because this leviathan kraken monster has emerged and you're trying, everyone's trying to fight the same monster, but really who who did the most damage, who earned the most points, who gets the most glory to say, I'm the one who really killed it. Right. Um, because they're that spinning whirlpool, it's constantly pulling you in. So it's easy action to go in, it's hard, expensive action to pull out, and at the end of every round, everyone just sucks in one. Right in more. And if you make it to the center, you get eaten, but it's okay because you can bank points to like sort of put your ship on layaway to rebuild it once rebuild it gets destroyed. It later. And then it's you rolling dice and you're assigning yeah, yeah. them to different spots on your board. Yeah, yeah, so like if you've got three different ships, you got six dice, so if you load your whole fleet under the water, you spread your dice kind of thin and you're a bigger target for your opponents to hit you as well as the tentacles. Right. But if you're small and nimble, you can't do a whole lot. So you're, it's always that push and pull. Find a nice little balance, but then a little press your luck. Right, and right. Depending on who you're playing, because that's a game that it seems like you could play with like the same group of people and they're all going to have a play style. Yeah. And then some rando comes in and sits down and they're like, what are you doing? And, right. you know, and just play it like completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, I watched, I basically watched, I think, between the two times I was lurking. <laughs> uh, and I was lurking. Right. Uh, I kind of saw most of a whole game and I kind of grokked most of the rules. Yeah. Because I didn't want to interrupt. I was like, hey, I want to talk to you in a minute. <laughs> and then you were like in a demo and right. I, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I was like, I brought, I even went and grabbed Bob. I'm like, Bob, you got to see this game. Like, check it out. Because Bob loves naval theme stuff. Now I know it could change. Yeah. yeah. But still, any game with good table presence, you know, interesting mechanics and like fun combat. But yeah, yeah. Combat's kind of optional. It's kind of a nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. you know, you, you're, everybody's, you know, attacking the, the monster. Right. You right. know, but. And, and I think I want to make combat not so optional, but like the preferred. Oh, right. Like I, I want to make it a, a, a bloodbath. Make it so you can really go. Well, yeah. the guys, the especially that first group, the guys that were demoing knew each other. They, and they got it. They, they, they understood. Boom, they I'm understood the assignment. You, you're going to get me. They did. They totally understood it. And yep. it looked like they were having a really good time playing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, those guys. <laughs> That was by far the best places of the day. Which oh, tells right me, on. okay, I got to find a way to present the information or retool the game in such a way that, like, you get this is the thing to do. Because when they did it, it sings. Right. When everyone kind of plays a little more timidly, and I'm just going to do the, I'm gonna do the homework assignment I was told to do. Oh, sure. I'm not going to get extra credit. And it's all right, but you could do a little bit more. And, like, right. just finding a way, what's an intuitive way how to incentivize people to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, How do I entice you? Yes, to, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very no. good. No. So you've got... A cut, well, I don't so, know what yeah. you can talk about. Oh, yeah, so so um, uh, I got Reality Shift out. Yes. Um, I've got uh, a deal signed with Inside Up, but n no details yet. That's cool. It'll, it'll be coming soon, I'm sure. Eyes um, open for that. And then um, I've got uh, a game um, with uh, another publisher who they're considering it. they right. got to kind of work out the logistics to see if they like it. Once that's done, I'll be able to talk about it. Um, and then I've got Strange Winds, which you saw me demoing. And then I've got uh, a party game right now that I'm calling Primal Talk. Okay. Because... I wanted to just kind of take a crack at a party, a party game, game and how could I make it? So the premise is, is that you're cavemen and you've got these stencils. And I based all my stencils, they, they, they just discovered this in like 2018, like this proto alphabet of like oh. 24 common characters across this whole, like all of Europe. It's like, wait a minute, like it's, we're seeing the same symbols everywhere. Right. Like this early caveman alphabet. So you can you can draw whatever you want. Basically, you're trying to get your, your partner or your team to say whatever word or phrase is on your card. Okay. Right? So, but the only thing you can do is draw with these stencils. So I, I place it and I draw like this crude caveman shape and I'm trying to convey this thing. You can also say whatever you want, but you can only grunt. So if I was gonna say table, I can only say tuh. Oh. So if the, if the card is like board game, I say bugger, and I'm oh. trying to draw a board game with these crude caveman symbols. And I can say, I can say anything as long as I grunt. Right. I can draw anything as long as I use those. So it's like, it's this weird. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. So I want to play that now. So that's, I, that's so much fun. I, I, I got it. We could, <laughs> we could break it out later. That's so good. And so I'm, I'm, I'm shopping that around right now to find a, find a home for find it. Find a good home for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And nothing, like we play party games all the time. You yeah. know, I mean, oh, we're, 
we play heavy Euro games and stuff, but it's right. still cool to like party games. I was yeah. just going to say. Yeah. Uh, we were up to like three playing Telestrations after dark with like yeah. 12 people. We yeah. were getting very rowdy well, in it, the demo hall. And that's the thing, too, is that like I tried, like technically you could play this party game with four people, one clue giver and one oh, clue guesser. Sure. But as soon as you get six, when there when there's two people who can bounce their brains off of each other, uh -huh. like it, it, it transforms like Just, that's how you have that's to play. you got to have that group dynamic yeah 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 that sounds awesome and yeah. really i was trying to think like of anything that sounds like it because that's the other thing that you know when you talk to people about games and game design it's yeah, like yeah. well what makes your game different right than and, the million others and when you and, hear and when you hear caveman game where you're giving clues people always automatically go oh well uh po poetry for neanderthals oh well, right. once you hear the rules like, oh wait a minute that doesn't nope, play way at all way the different. same way um and yeah, I, I I got a great uh, playtest video that I put up that like, shows it in action. It was it was just it's a it's a really fun time. That's hilarious. And yeah. then because even uh, when I was watching you demo yesterday, I'm like I've never seen anything like this. Like uh -huh. I've seen games that have boats in it. And yeah. I've seen games with tentacle monsters, but I've never yeah. seen it implemented in that way. And I love that whirlpool aspect because anything that without being fiddly but kind of like puts a little timer and on. And it was very fiddly in the beginning. Oh, sure. Uh, very fiddly. Sure. And, you know, I know I've met a lot of people who are brilliant board game designers oh, who sure. um, they use their head and they crunch the numbers. I use my gut. Right. Like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just going to try it. And if Feels it works, I don't know why it works. I just know that it works. Right. So, you know, I don't want to pretend to, you know. I've got this spreadsheet. You know, right. Or, or, the, or that I'm, I'm somehow master planning and I'm whatever, but that, uh, if people are making bikes and they're trying to make the best bike possible, I want to go make a pogo stick. I want oh, to make right. something that is just so radically different that I don't need to completely perfect every little thing because the novelty is going to carry itself on its own. So yeah, yeah that that what, this game was nothing but I want a board that sucks you to the center and destroys you when you hit the center. Nice. I hadn't seen it before. And for all I know, it's out there and just in ignorance, I started working on this. And yeah, I mean, you could probably, ah, there's this and there's that. And it's kind of like that, but I just hadn't seen it. Not like, like a, that, no. Right. Right. Not like that. Not in my. There's a game I know. It's in space. You go around the sun. It's like Soul S O L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes. it's really good, but it's not that. Right. You know, and it's it, you're doing a completely different thing. Right. Uh, and so, and again, reality shift. Never seen anything like it. Right. And you're just like, oh, like this is awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. well, and again, the presentation, the design of it, magnets. Magnets are super fun. Magnets games. are always fun. Always fun in games. Never not fun. Underused. So yeah, we because we always talk about like uh, mechanics that are either underused or we want to see in more games, you know, kind of yeah. thing, and uh, multi-use cards, which I already touched on. Yep. And the, the simplicity though of your multi-use card yes. system, because it's like you just do A, B, or C, that's it. Yep. And again, a game you can teach in five minutes. Yep. And then you know you're gonna ask you're gonna answer a follow-up question or two, part of the way through it maybe. Yeah. And then be like, let's go. Yeah. You know, rock and roll. Yeah. Um, what? Well, now we're gonna get out. We're gonna get out into Let's the wild. It. Let's do it. What are some of your favorite board games, man? Oh man! All right. So a testament to its quality, because I never win. Okay. Ever. But I'll play it any day of the week when someone puts it in front of me. Is Small World. Oh, Small World's fun. I love Small and World. And easy. It's yeah. just high number. Right. Remove this many. Yeah. The only thing you'll get a little lost in your first time playing is like, wait, why is this a good power? Why is oh. that a good race? And like, you learn that as you go. Like, wait a minute. These two are paired oh. up. Oh, buckle up! I'm yeah, getting yeah, that yeah. one. I'm going. I'm I'm jumping the gun. I'm right. jumping down and getting this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Small right, world's right. really good. Um. Oh gosh, you're putting me on the spot. I'm trying. So now I'm trying to like picture my how, shelf. How long have you been into hobby board games? We'll like lead back naturally. So yeah. So I've I've been in first introduced. I think it was like seven or eight years ago was when I first got into it. Bang was like. Oh hell yeah. It was like like here's a game. And yep. then and then I had known about Catan, but I hadn't really played it. Then I got into that, and obviously that was great. Playing, playing Ticket to Ride, all those sort of like started classic. Off, yeah, I you're started off going. a lot on the same path, and yeah. a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I, uh, it's been like 11 or 12 years for me now. My sister, I was like a Magic the Gathering, Warhammer, and then I, the one board game I would play, well, a couple of board games we would play, but were like Axis and Allies and Risk. But then I was a big Game of Thrones fan before the shows, even because I'm a nerd. Yeah. And so there was a, when I was like in a game store buying role playing game books, and I saw there was a Game of Thrones board game. I'm like, what mm -hmm. the hell is that? Yeah. And that was like the first edition before they streamlined it and improved it immensely. The second edition is the one to get 
uh, but I've got my first edition and my second edition. But I bought that, and I got my friends, like my gaming group, like because we were playing either Magic or D and D or Warhammer. Yeah. We started playing Game of Thrones, and I was like, "This is board games." And then my sister was into board games. Was like, "Oh, you like that? You should play." Like we played DC Deck Builder a lot because it's a deck. You know, it's like my first deck building game, and Dominion and Catan. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. And then it's like the sky's the limit now, yeah, right? Yeah. And there was there was a shitload of games. 10 years ago and now it's even right, better. Right, right. Um, I definitely bought into the art, just because of the artwork, uh, Mountains of Madness and Photosynthesis. Oh, yes. Just seeing those boxes, so beautiful. And I will say, like, Photosynthesis, ta that's kind of where I got the table presence That bug. is, that game is table presence the game. It's a forest. It is. There's, like, when it's done, like, you're looking at a forest. And I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I am so bad at Photosynthesis. <laughs> I and I, I'm always I'm almost embarrassingly bad. I yeah. know the rule. They're like Tim. Do you even understand how this game's played? I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm making trees and the yeah. shade. And well, oh well. And but, then one that I really love, and I just backed the the new batch they have coming out is Santorini. Oh yeah. Santorini is one of those things that when I played it, I'm like, I wish I would have made this game because uh -huh. you know, all it is is three dimensional connect four. That's it. That's it. That is it. It's so simple. And it also table presence, right? Right. Exactly. You know, it looks like a city. You're, you're building this yes. thing up. The the contrast of the colors you know and the yeah. starkness and it's the the theme yes. works and then what i haven't played the new york one there's a santorini new york and it's I, totally different but like different in a good way where it's oh, like sure I, I, now i have to like reconfigure my brain to understand this new right, set of right, rules. right well and it's also nice that it's totally different because then it's not like well i replace this you know right. like slap I, a skin on it yeah, call yeah, it a day. Yeah. right right yeah and again a game where i can teach my family and it's still strategic right so all, all relatively lightweight, and then the heavy ones. Um, you know, I tried Scythe for a while, and like it's just it's just that a little tier two above my normal speed. Sure. Terraforming Mars, I'm I'm there every time. And then one I just found that I'm falling in love with is Outer Rim, Star oh, Wars. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, that's such a good game. So it's so good. It I really 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 like Outer Rim, but there is one called Zaya Legends of a Drift System okay. that is was out before Outer Rim. Uh, but it's a little less known, a lot less known. Yeah. But it is more sandboxy. And, but it's like Outer Rim where your ships are, you know, you're getting the ships you want. It's a little customizable whether you're picking up and delivering and like right. what you, how you interact with the other players and, and right. you know, going after them or I'm doing pick up and deliver, like which one are you doing? Yeah. But yeah, Outer Rim and then it's like Star Wars, Outer Rim. I can fly the Millennium Falcon. Are you kidding me? Like, please. Right, right. Uh, and you have to get the expansion for Outer Rim that lets you, because like, you've got the Outer Rim, but they're dead ends at both spots. Right. And then the expansion lets you teleport Go. through there, and that's it. And then and there's a couple, like, contracts that you get that play different. And, like, played it a few times without it, got the expansion. It's like, this is how it's now, supposed to be now played. It, now we now got it's it. here. And now. sometimes games can be great, and you didn't even realize the expansion fixes it. Right, but, right. But, yeah, okay, that's... We have a we have similar tastes in games. Cool. I'm, I'm discovering, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, Outer Rim's great. Uh, I would if you ever get a chance, check out Zaya. It's a little heavier. It's a, I shouldn't say heavier. There's just a little more, few more rules because right. you're actually outfitting your ship, and then you can like up, you know, sell your ship, upgrade it, right. get a fancier one. But then you're like the planetary uh, exploration. You're exploring the universe, so it's hexes. So you yeah, can yeah. scan the tile. So you can flip it and see what it is, yeah, yeah. or you can just blindly jump in, and you might fly through like an asteroid field right. or into a sun, yeah. and destroy your ship. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to respawn somewhere. Cool. It's madness. But Outer Rim was one of those interesting things where, it's like, obviously, if this is your first day on gaming, you're not going to touch that. Right. You're gonna open the box. You're at the components. You're gonna open the rule book. And it's you're, all you're, in. You're just going to shut it. Yeah. Your eyes going to roll back in your head. I looked at it and I was nervous because it's that's a lot to digest. Uh -huh. And it was amazing how. Once it's, you get going, it's, it's just... Not, it's intuitive. It's so intuitive. You know, and right. there's something to be said for that. You know, is. It's like, right. oh, this works like it should. And people way smarter than me are the ones who figure that out. Like, I don't do those heavy games because I, I, <laughs> I can't figure out how to do it. Know your strengths, man. That's you know, right. That's, that's right. It. Stay in your lane. That's it. That's yeah. it. Um, is there any... I'm trying to think because I always want to ask like a million questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything we haven't hit on that you're like, I need to talk about or I want to... Uh, don't I mean, miss your opportunity to yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about it. I mean, like, got in the hobby seven or eight years ago I've been doing this for about five right I'm trying to have a board game every year pandemic definitely put a monkey wrench into that um, but like you know my process is basically like I said, kind of said before like I'm always looking for like, what's that pogo stick to the bike oh, what's right this on. unique little thing that I'm doing and never more than two at a time sure because 
Otherwise, I'll dilute my efforts. I won't really make progress anywhere. I've got a list a mile long on my phone of games I'm going to get to later. Oh, right, right, right. But it's nice to have two because, like, if I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I kind of get the blinders. I can't figure it out. I get to pivot over here. And, like, I'm just always got at least two in the pipeline. Got something, right? Breaks the monotony, right, right. and the grind. Right. Um, right. You are out of the Cleveland area. I am. It's awesome because yeah. you're not far from us. Yeah, yeah, And, man, I had a question. I was, oh, yeah, mechanics or theme for you? Mechanics. Well, hey, all right, man. So, there's the catch. My, my thing is always yes to both. Well, I'm a paradox, but go on. I'm I'm focused on mechanics, and I'm coming at this from the point of view as a as a as someone as trying a, to get well, as a designer right? game sign. Like when I when I play a game, like I don't really care what the theme is. I don't think, like like with photosynthesis, the artwork oh. drew me in, the look of it drew me in. Right. But if it plays like garbage, I don't care. Right. So I want the mechanics to be sound, and the theme can as long as it's good is is there. But what's right. most important is the mechanics. What I found when I was designing games is I was mechanics, 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 and sometimes no theme, just leave it abstract and let the publisher sort of fill in the gaps. But sometimes it's so abstract, you can't understand what's happening. So the theme helps that. And then I found, well, wait a minute. If I'm if I'm a temple explorer instead of a pirate, then I can do this thing and it makes sense. And it could be this mechanic in the game and it opens up new avenues. And then yes, it becomes this self-fulfilling loop where right. they help each right. other out. Everything, not, it almost writes itself at that point, right? right? You just open your brain up and just yep. cause, um there are game. I, I kind of have this philosophy about where if if a game doesn't have a theme or a great theme or whatever, if the mechanics are good, I'm in. I love it. Who cares? Yeah. But sometimes, like a photosynthesis, I come for the theme or the presentation right. and then stay for the mechanics. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, well, this game's beautiful, but I don't like it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Or, yeah. Photosynthesis, <laughs> Mountains of Madness, Santorini. I can still remember seeing the picture, just on the box on the shelf, and thinking, I gotta check that out. Well, I'm legit. Last year at Gen Con, we were we were uh, we didn't have a booth. We were walking around with a camera and like little lav mics, yeah, like ambushing people in their booths. Hey, yeah, yeah, talk yeah. to us. Yeah, and um, we probably stopped by reality by the Academy Games for reality <laughs> shift like six times. And everybody's like, "Have you played it yet? Have you played? Oh, I got to get over there for a demo." You know what I mean? Thank you, man. And it I was like that. total like, and then we just got really lucky because. Uva from Academy yeah. was walking by, or our, we had a booth at Origins this year, yeah. and he was walking by and he goes, oh, what are you guys doing? You know, and so I kind of gave him our pitch, yeah. and he's like, hey, you want to come over and I'll give you something to review, and he handed me Reality Shift, and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Like we've, our, actually, I think Bob was so mad because an hour before we talked to Uva and he hadn't been back to the booth, he went and bought it, yeah. like the deluxe right. and the regular, <laughs> and, he, and I come over like to the booth with it, and he's like, what? And I'm like, no, I'll keep this one. You right. got yours. Right, right, right. Uh, and so, like, it was it was an awesome opportunity for us because it was a game we were geeking out about yeah. a year ago, yeah. and then rolling in because yeah, table presence. I can't tell you how many games I bought at Gen Con before I was even doing this gig, yeah. where I'm like, that, that looks beautiful. Tell me about it. Like uh, Tower of Madness. Have you seen that one? It's like the marble tower with yeah, the tentacles yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out of it, and it's like, I don't care. It's Kerplunk. It's Cthulhu Kerplunk. Yeah. I know what it is. Yeah. But I wanted it because yeah. it looks so cool. Yes. And it is fun to play. It's not like, uh, I've got this deep strategy, you know, and it's so right. fulfilling. But I'm right. laughing and I'm having a good time. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and by the way, something that you just kind of jogged, I know a lot of people don't like it. I love chaos, randomness. 100%. And, and it always bugs me why people say, well, it's too random. It's like, well, you're just not planning far enough ahead. Yes, you have a plan A. And when something random happens, you don't just throw it out. You should have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, sort of in the back of your mind. And I love that. That like, okay, this, but then this, and this, and then this, and that you can crunch it a little bit, even though it's somewhat out of your control. And that's my excuse for just bad planning. Right. You know, it's like, oh, that was a terrible plan. Good thing I can't do it anymore, because right. now I can do this. Right, all right. I love... as. Yeah, and nobody wants to play like a three-hour long game filled with chaos because no, right. that's a little rough right. sometimes. Yeah, so maybe it's because my chaotic randomness fits with the light but to medium I'm, stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. but light to medium with a lot of chaos because here's the thing. is Scythe is a great game, and my, it's very popular in my group. Yeah. And it's like, for me, everybody got really good at it and almost solvable with it, where it's like there's right moves to make. Right. And so if I'm playing with... I can play Scythe with you and be competitive and teach and have a nice time, yeah. you know, everything. If I play with my buddies who play it all the time and play through the campaign, I get smoked. Yeah. And I'm not a, I'm not bad at the game. I've won it. Yeah. But they put so much time into it. And yeah. then we'll play something that's 45 minutes to an hour. Yep. 
I'm in my wheelhouse, baby. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, there, there's something and in my brain where I can't play a game that feels like I'm doing taxes. I need yeah. action. Yeah, I need yeah, yeah. something to happen. Yeah, and again, right, there's a place in the hobby for those games. Of course and there is. There's, Absolutely. There's, people that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. That's just not what I, what right. I do. Right. Right, and I enjoy playing them, but like when a bunch of them, a bunch of my friends that are sharks at that game are yeah. playing it, I'm like, I'm going to go play like three games while you guys play that. Yeah. Hit me up on the next one. Yeah. You know, because... Uh, I like a little bit of madness in my games, a little bit of chaos. I love yeah. Happy Salmon. It's the dumbest, lightest game. <laughs> it is. We played it in the, somebody, I had brought my copy at Origins and somebody walked by and was like, oh, Happy Salmon's good. And one of my co-hosts was like, oh, Tim loves Happy Salmon. He'll play it with you. And this guy had his kids with him and stuff. And I'm like, who's playing? I heard somebody say Tim will play Happy I'm like, who's playing? And we filmed it in the booth, like it just like with phones. Yeah. And we're jumping around being idiots for two minutes. Yep. We're all laughing, having a good time. I don't even remember who won. We're yeah. throwing cards everywhere. I've had I've sustained injuries playing Happy yeah. Salmon, yeah. run around the table. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. like smacked in the face and I'm trying to cross through the right, thing. Right, right. I don't care. It's a blast. Uh, right. But there's games like you know you can love games like that. You can love the there's, there's games for everybody. What What's your your thought on on co-op games? Because something that always irks me a little bit is how like when you're playing a game where we're all working together, uh -huh. there's always one person who sort of becomes the, 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 the de facto coach and kind of tells everyone what to do. So I love co-op games if they're hard. Right. Because uh, with smart, I've got friends like we can, we'll play like party games and we, have, we share a brain sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And when we do co-op games, we kind of can share a brain and we'll just bing, bang, boom. But also, I don't like to play co-op games with quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So I will play co-op games with people I don't know. I will actively work against quarterbacks. Right. Not to like sabotage the game, but I just really try to go like, listen, we don't need the best move. Like let the, let people well, like, kind of play through the game. A game like Forbidden Island, the point is that you're supposed to be spread out. Right. Not communicating perfectly with each other, I would think when I see that theme. I would say yes. And so. You know, taking a chapter out of the, the primal talk, that caveman party game, yeah. I've got this idea that if I can figure it out, I'm going to try to go after. What's a co-op game with limited communication? Oh, Rules yeah. where you're only allowed to communicate in certain ways. So it's not just, all right, everyone, here's what you should do. All right, team, go. And, like, the quarterback right. is running the show. But the quarterback's only allowed to say one word for the round or I don't know what. So Even like, better. you're choosing your words so you, carefully. You've just got to take it away. You've got to take that away from yes, them so yes. they can't do it. Yes. Because... It, I mean, some people are fine with it, you know, and stuff. But I, I, tr I really try actively to be like, hey, if I'm teaching it, I'm going to be like, these are your options. Right. Do what feels good. You and, know you, what and, I mean? he, and you got to have that feeling of like when you play code names and you're the clue giver and you're just like. <gasps> yeah. And then the, when the round's over. Ugh. Right. All right. And this is and then you can kind of get uh, out of your system and then back into the next round and your limited communication. Yeah. And like, so long as you have that push and pull you know hold release i think that'll work out that's where i'm at so i yeah. we're, again we 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 see eye to eye on a lot of yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of stuff because yeah like i love like black orchestra and ghost stories those are some really hard co-ops defenders of the realm yeah uh not overly complicated but just hard and they beat you up what's the name of that one where you're the ghost giving picture clues mysterium mysterium no, mysterium great great game great co-op yeah yeah great co-op right. and again like because yeah, because the the the, you the, can't talk. Well, the assigned quarterback. Like, it's not like someone just becomes the de facto. We're told you're in charge. Right. They can only say these little bits and pieces. There you go. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and so that's that's where I'm at. Like, yeah. I love those kinds of games. I remember I was at a convention playing the Polish version of Mysterium before it came over to the States, yeah. and I ordered one from Portal Games, like, Europe, and had it shipped over. And then, of course, the next year, like, Asmodee or whoever picked up the mm -hmm. license and made the American version and I'm a hipster so I'm like I'm holding on to my my <laughs> European version also I paid a lot of money to get that get that game but that game was right. nuts we'd never seen anything like it I hadn't played Dixit before because mm -hmm. everybody's like oh it's Dixit right but uh, I hadn't played Dixit before and then it totally like a years later I played Dixit and I'm like well yeah but I, I like Mysterium yeah. Um, but yeah, games like that. You should play uh, a mystery or Detective Club. Have you played Detective Club? No. So it's got these Mysterium style cards right okay you got these little notebooks. Yeah. You're gonna one person is gonna write one word in the notebook. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And they're gonna write it in all of. Say there's six players. They're gonna write that word in five of the notebooks. Okay. They're gonna pass out the note shuffle okay. and pass out the notebooks. Okay. 
one, one person does not have the word. Right. So everybody is playing a card, a right. Mysterium style so card. So a, a little uh, spy fallish. Yeah, a little spy okay. fallish. Okay. And then so everybody plays. You can play a card, play a card, play a card. Yeah. And so you don't want to be too on theme because if you don't have the word, I don't want to make it too obvious. Just like. But yep. you can't go too left field. Because then what's going to happen is you look suspicious. You go like three rounds. Everybody yeah. goes plays a card. So if you don't have the word, you're looking around, and hopefully you're not first. You play a card, and then you're going to add a card to your hand, right? You get yeah. around. Everybody's got three cards, and then you have to. Then the person who handed out the notebooks is like, the word was this, and he, these were why the cards do this. And then everybody has to go around and explain why they laid the cards that they oh. laid. Oh, so you have to be pretty good at BS. Yeah. Totally. And then and then the after everybody explains, you've got these little magnifying glass tokens and you throw I think I think you're full of crap. You know, like yeah. this, this, this. And it's so fun. Yeah. It's so wild. You get crazy stories and stuff. And it's kind of co op, you know, because everybody's trying to score, but uh, at the same time you you can have it in that game sometimes where people are like, Well, it's clearly this and they're just gonna argue. Right. You know, and stuff like that. And I think that's why I my brain jumped over to the co op thing. But man, Great game, Detective Club. Stro strong recommend. It's yeah, a game yeah. of BS, and with the right group, yeah. it's a blast. Yeah, yeah. So, but this has been awesome, man. Yeah, man, this is great. I, thank you so much for like stopping by. Yeah. And uh, it was the and, hat and doing this. It was the hat, guys. The hat I, worked. I saw him a mile away. <laughs> the hat worked. It wasn't my nose either. It was the hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's one or the other. It's one or the other. Uh, Matt, you've been awesome, dude. Hey, man. I really you, appreciate it. Anytime you got stuff coming out, reach out. Like Absolutely. we want to be a part of it. You got it. It's fantastic. Cool. We're big fans. Very cool. Guys, for the board game rundown, I've been Tim. This has been Matt. We'll see you next time. And play Reality Shift. Yes, and buy some. <laughs>